Welcome back to the channel. For this video, we're going to walk through how to set up the web application firewall on AWS to restrict access to our AWS SFTP server by IP. Thankfully, AWS provides a how-to guide on how to do this. I've linked it in the README, but I'll also show it here on how to do this step by step. We're going to follow along and do this for our SFTP server that we created in the previous video. This video is going to be a lot shorter in comparison to the previous videos as we're just setting up IP restrictions. Before we get started, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Support me on either Patreon or GitHub sponsors, subscribing to the YouTube channel, liking this video and sharing on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, etc. Starting the repo on GitHub and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot. I really appreciate it. So let's get going. So we have this guide here. I'm going to walk through it with code. Before we actually get started though and start restricting IPs, let's make sure we can actually connect to our SFTP server. If you follow along from the previous videos, you should have your transfer family right here, AWS transfer family. You should have your server created. Click into it. Scroll down. Here's your endpoint. And open up WinSCP, Core FTP, whatever you're using. New session. Make sure that it's exactly the same here. Your username, whatever you use, and your password. Where your username and password are coming from Secrets Manager. Click Save. Log in. Okay, so we verify we can log in. This is a good first step just to verify that you were able to log in before you started putting on restrictions to make sure there wasn't a problem with your server before the restrictions started being applied. So minimizing this, we're back to here. So where we're going to go is to AWS WAF, which stands for Web Application Firewall. This is going to allow us to restrict the IPs. So the first thing we need to do, though, is go to IP sets here over on the left. Here we're going to define the IP set range we either want to allow or block access to our server. So let's create IP set. Let's give the same name of the convention, AWS FTP server, and we'll put IP block list. Because we're going to give a list of IPs to block. Scroll down, IP addresses. I'm just going to use my IP. So I'm going to give it a single IP for whatever I have right now. The way to get that simply, Google, what is my IP? Paste it here, you can put the 32 at the end if you want, and then create IP set. Great. So we have our IP set. Next thing we want to do is go to web ACLs on the left. This is we're going to create our access control list. If you're familiar with security groups with EC2 instances, this should be very familiar as well. So you're going to do create, give it a name, AWS SFTP server, same name convention, and just call it ACL. Scrolling down. Add a resource, we're going to use the API gateway, which we're using for authentication into our AWS SFTP server. Click Add, click Next. We're going to add rules, my own rules. So we're going to do IP set right here, AWS SFTP server, WAF rule, IP set right here. Here's our block list, source IP. We're actually going to do IP address in header, as indicated in this guide. If we scroll down, it's actually telling us right here to use source IP. So going back, we're going to change this right here to source with a capital S, IP. First address, match, and we're going to block it. So what are we doing here? We're blocking access to our SFTP server, which we just verified at the beginning of the video we could connect. Now we're not going to be able to connect. So go ahead and click Add Rule. We can just next through everything. And create. Okay, after it's done creating, we can actually test connection to our server again. So let's go back to WinSCP, Core FTP, whatever you're using. Close the connection. Let's do a new session. So we try to log in. Same host name, because the endpoint hasn't changed for our transfer family SFTP server. Same username, same password. Now, if you try this right away, you may be able to log in. I recommend waiting at least a minute or two before you try to log in for the WAF rule to be applied. So let's try to log in. Access denied. So our access control list is now denying our IP. We try to enter our password again, same as before. Remember, I was just using password simply. Again, access denied. Didn't work. Now, what can we do here? Well, I have a VPN, so I'm just going to change my IP real fast. Okay, I've just changed my IP. I'm going to do the same thing, new session. Not changing anything again. Log in. Now I'm able to log in fine. So it's working correctly as we expected. 
Now we showed how to block a single IP. That's usually not the use case. The use case is how to allow single IPs. So if we click into the rule, we go into the rules. We actually edit this up here at the top. So instead of blocking down here, we can click allow. This means it will only allow connections from the IP address that we specified in the IP list. So we could save the rule here, go back to IP set, and now we'll only allow connections from the IP address we specified at the bottom. If we want to add IP addresses, it's very simple. We'll just click right here, type them in, good to go. It makes it very easy to restrict by IP address for on the server access level. Now, while this is a great feature, it does limit the functionality a little bit. If you have multiple users inside of an organization and you, they each have their own unique IP for whatever reason, maybe it's an immature infrastructure where there isn't a VPN setup, everybody's working from home, everyone has a specific home IP they need whitelisted. Instead of whitelisting these IPs on the server level, the client may want to whitelist these IPs on the user level. Providing this functionality isn't always necessary, but it is nice to have. So we're going to show in the next video how to restrict IP access at the user level instead of relying simply at the server level. That's it for this video though. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.